Hey y'all, this is AL Thick Madam, and this is the recap review for Delilah. So the episode started where it left off last time and old boy is outside of Gary's residence and he has overheard the people say that this is being ruled a suicide and nobody is believing that Gary killed himself. He has already been trying to be very, very vocal about not discussing anything because these people watching him and now all of a sudden the same day he's supposed to be meeting up with Delilah he is found dead he had I mean the wife at the house with the baby they done brought the baby home from the hospital and all this so now the baby gonna grow up without his father because he had to die because these people was gonna do the most to him if they weren't the ones who were at fault to begin with so I'm like y'all is really out here doing the most so the little boy is not going to be able to go home with his mama. And so he's talking to his daddy before he leaves. His daddy is Nate. And he whispers something to his daddy in. Delilah looking like, okay, what are you talking about? And he just shook his head. So they're sitting outside in the waiting area of the facility before they leave and he opens up the little drawing that he had and it was a picture of him in between his mama and his daddy and he was like mom hates me mommy hates me or something like that and so she was like oh no she doesn't hate you and so he was like you know dad tried to tell me that or whatever and she had to let him know like don't worry about all this stuff. What you want for dinner and trying to, you know, kind of, you know, bribe him a little bit to kind of make him feel better. But you can tell that child is so sad. Now he got to come back to the house. Her kids are going to be in a little bit of a funk because that's one more mouth to feed. That's, you know, uh, older kids in a lot of cases don't like smaller kids being around them. They feel like they're cramping their style and all that. Like I lived for my little brother and sister up until a certain point. They started to kind of get on my nerves at times, but then I got used to it. So I know the little, the brother, the brother is very much so in his feelings because he has been having to give up his room and or share his room with this child. So yeah, um, so he got to go back to the house with her for how much longer? Nobody knows. Not sure if her brother's going to even be able to take care of him when he is actually done with his Physical therapy. So, yeah. Um, it's just too much for me. I ain't got time. And I hate when stuff like this happens. It's not cool. So, Tamara is at work on a Sunday. Working. And Delilah called her and was like, what are you doing at work on a Sunday? And she was like, oh, well, I'm prepping for my meeting with Fred Osborne. So, you already know. She's looking at her like, girl... Um, then told her the situation about how this man killed himself and the receptionist in here being nosy to my some wrong office. Girl, no, you a lie. You easy to drop in and go somewhere and sit down. I'm not finna believe that after however long you've been there, you ain't brand new. You knew who office you was walking into. I ain't trying to hit that. But anyway, so she didn't got up and closed the door. And so she was like, what do you mean? Like, what's going on? She done told her about the situation that it went down and that she is taking Leah's case. And so she was like, Look, I don't want to have to go up against you. Like, just drop this case. You know how she is and all this other stuff. And so she was like, I can't do it. And so Delilah kind of threw a shot at her and was like, we all know that you're there and you're trying to get this promotion. And that's the only thing. You making partner is really the only thing that you really care about like that. And so she felt slighted and she was like, you know, I ain't mean it like that. I know that that is a goal of yours or whatever. So, you know, she kind of ended the conversation. was like, all right, well, I got to get back to work. So, I mean, it is what it is. And I'm like, girl, you in your feelings like that. So anyway, <clears throat> she at the house now. And she, I'm talking about Tamara. Tamara at the house now. And she's bait up with the man, Casey. I don't know what they're, I think they boyfriend and girlfriend, fiance, something or whatever. So they bait up. I'm, I'm here for the shirt being open and, and the underwear being on and being, you know, it's breakfast time and all this. He looks good. So anyway, they talking and she was like, you would never believe how she was talking to me. And he was just like, you know, good and well that she's on your side. 
and all of that. Like, he was trying to encourage her, but she ain't really here for it right now. She's trying to believe it, but she ain't really here for it. So, it's just yet to be seen for her. So, she's going to have to see where it lands. Because as of right now, they looking like enemies instead of friends. Delilah's daughter, Maya, if I'm not mistaken, that's her name. She's at school. And her friend approached her and said that Miss Virginia is teaching lessons at the violin shop. And so, she's like, wow, okay. So, she was like, you know, you should go. So, she kind of looking like... Why though? But yeah, I think she's gonna drop in and see what it's hitting for. Oh, y'all. So, Delilah is at work, and you know, Leah is in her office, and so Leah has come in to sign the paperwork. This heifer is all about money. It's like for you to be all about money, but then, you know, every now and, again, and it, like every now and again, you kind of feel like, oh, well, do I need to fear for my life? Because you see what happened to Gary. And it's like, you know, she's like, well, it's looking like it was a murder situation, but they try to make it seem like it was suicide. But she's all about money. She want to know what, what they're going to give her, like a million, two million, five million, what? And so... It just gets to the point where in order for her to sign it, Delilah was like, anything is possible. Crazier things have happened. Sure. So she signs the paperwork and she's just like, girl, I'm going to have to get the ball rolling. If you don't sign this paperwork, I can't get the ball rolling. In order to get the ball rolling, she has to turn this paperwork in. And then once she submits that paperwork, it will be able to get somebody to come over from the newspaper to do a story and have her on the front of the newspaper. So that would be what kind of helps to make it so, so that she can be alive. But I'm like, girl, you over here talking about money. How much money you going to get? You ain't going to get nothing if you're dead, helper. Sign the paperwork and go on. So she signed the paperwork. I was like, girl, bye. So she left. So the receptionist came in and, you know, when she actually came into the office, she was on the phone trying to book something to go like to the beach or something with her friends or whatever. So she came into Delilah's office and asked her if she could have Friday off. She was like, sure. But then she said to her, hey, call Demetria and set up an appointment with her. I need to hire her. What do you think about working with her? And she was like, I mean, okay. Thinking that it's going to be like a one-time thing or every now and again or whatever. She was like, nah, it's going to be permanent. With this case, a lot going to be going down. A lot of stuff is going to be going on. So I'm going to need all hands on deck because it's going we're going to get buried in paperwork. I already know they're going to have us buried in discovery stuff. So we're going to need all hands on deck. So now the hell for talking about, oh, well, I can cancel Friday. Uh-huh. You feel like your job finna be in jeopardy because old girl was on it last time. Y'all ain't said nothing about it, but I know that template had to have been updated. And the reason why it didn't get handed back to y'all was because of what? Because Demetria said what she said. But anyway, she's going to have to get on the phone and get them to do what they need to do. And go ahead and get that woman in there so she can get that job. I'm happy for her. So anyway, today is the day that Tamara is meeting up with Fred Osborne. So they're having a meeting. And of course, they know that she's friends with Delilah and they want to know if it's some kind of way that they can work that in their favor. And so she looking like, yeah, I'm friends with her, but I have one question for you. So before she can even ask the question, he talking about, yeah, I'll give you $2 million. $2 million. I don't know if that's to sell or for what. I think that's to sell or something. I don't know. And so she was like, that's good to know, but uh, I think I think that's what it's going to be for her. She was like, uh, that's good, duly noted, but that's not what I was going to ask you. So she wanted to know like what was really going on, what's the nature of the case and all this other stuff. And so he was like, look, I was told I need to disclose everything. I have been a happily married man for 27 years. And I think he lying. Even though old girl Leah must have had a whole lot of skeletons and did the most back in the day. So far, other stuff that she said has checked out 100% completely. So this man has sat up here and said that he's had a few drunken nights with her. And that's all he got to say about it. Like, that's the only stuff that has happened. He wants to stay a happily married man. I'm like, oh, so you trying to make it seem like, oh, she mad because I slept with her. We slept together. And despite all the other stuff she's done and I looked away, I, I turned my head the other way for the longest. And it built up over time. And she basically thought she could get her way. But now we went on ahead and fired her. And now she want to retaliate. I don't want her to come out 
of nowhere, out of nowhere, eventually, and say something that's going to jeopardize my my marriage. And I'm like, boy, I feel like you don't care about your marriage like that. Like, that, you know, good and well, that is not the reason why you are soliciting these people's help. If it, if it was that deep, I feel like you would not go to all of these extreme lengths just to keep that woman quiet. Stop the lies. Delilah went over to the VA to see her brother and to, you know, she really went over there with a purpose because his son left his perimeter cap over there so that he can go see his daddy. I'm pretty sure he did all this on purpose so he could stay home and all this other stuff, but that part of it didn't work. So after school, she promised to take him to go and see if it was there because it probably was there and it was. Anyway, she get there and her daddy is there and her daddy is like a sergeant, a chief or whatever. She apparently does not get along well with him at all. And he went on ahead and took his grandson to get a popsicle Why they spoke about it. And she was like, well, what is he even doing here? And he was like, look, he has connections. He has people who can help me and all this other stuff. So she was like, oh, okay, so you trying to make it seem like I don't already help you? Oh, okay. So ain't nobody here for this. They just want everybody to get along. I don't know what he did to her in the past, but she ain't here for it. And I think he probably just got on board with being here for him himself. So anyway, he came back out with the popsicle for his grandchild and he was like, well, let me go get your perimeter cap. He went and got the perimeter cap and they went and did a patrol around a small part of the building and came back while Del Delilah and her daddy talked to one another. And of course, she asked him about Gary's case and wants to know if he knew about it being sealed and all this other stuff. Of course, they cross over. And so he was like, please don't ask me to show you none of this stuff because it's sealed and I cannot do that. She was like, I was not even going to ask you that. So, yeah, he wants them to be able to work together as a family. And she was like, yeah, no, that's what we're not going to do. So that was a waste of time. <laughs> Delilah's daughter went to the violin shop and Miss Virginia was there and just upon meeting her, she was like, oh, here's the prodigy. And so she was like, oh, no, no, I'm no prodigy. So she schooled her real quick and was like, never devalue yourself like that. Like, how do you feel on the inside? Is there a burning sensation inside or whatever? And, you know, she was like, that's a good point. Yeah, because don't sit up there and be like, oh, no, that's not me. When that could very well be you sooner than later. Like, don't do that. That could be you in the future. So, of course, she wanted to hear her play. And she played for her, and then she stopped her. So she was like, did I do something wrong? She was like, no, you did nothing wrong. So we are supposed to infer that she got her life. So I'm like, okay, you got the approval from Miss Virginia. Delilah and Tamara are talking on the phone, and Tamara seems very convinced that there really won't be a case, but the motion has been filed, and they are going to go up against each other. And so she's trying to get Delilah to come over for them to have dinner, so they can discuss the things that she learned while she was in the meeting with Fred. And so now I'm thinking like maybe the $2 million is for Leah and or uh, uh, Delilah to settle out of court. I don't know. I, I just like specifics. I don't want to just automatically assume that that's what the money is for. So yeah. But yeah, she did say, well, I hope you think that I hope you don't think that you're going to be able to just throw some money at me and then it'll go away. So she was like, just come over for dinner tonight. So I guess she's going to agree to do that. So she at the house. She's getting the, the kids squared away. Her daughter has come home. And so she's wondering where she at because she didn't got in the house after her. she literally walked in like a minute after she did. So she was like, where have you been? And she told her that she was at that violin shop. And she ended up playing for Miss Virginia. And Miss Virginia is going to actually be teaching her for free. So she's like, who, who gives lessons for free? And so she was like, who gets mad at somebody giving lessons for free? And she was like, I ain't say I was mad. Who's mad? And she was like, the look on your face clearly shows that you're mad. So she was like, well, can I at least meet this Miss Virginia first? She was like, yeah, I'll set it up. So, you know, teenage hormone attitude situation is going on. And yeah. The son is in his feelings because she done got home with little Dion and was like, 
Marcus, you need to help him set the table. He was like, I just finished my homework. And so she was like, yeah, that means you have plenty of time freed up to help him. So get it done. <laughs> Delilah showed up for the little dinner that she's supposed to have with her friend. And they got a whole shit did going on at the house. She looking like, whoa, when she get there, she was like, look, I didn't know Casey set this up. And then when I found out about it, if I had told you, you wouldn't have come. So she does come inside. She gets introduced to Casey's partner, who is this fine specimen who is making homemade pizza from scratch. He over there kneading dough and some more. And I'm like, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Um, and Delilah likes what she's seeing. And I'm pretty sure she's wondering if that's on the menu. But yeah. So they, they say they had up a little chemistry going on in their lives and so she's like okay let's see how this you know the fastest settlement in history is gonna go and Delilah wants to know how many of the beverages of the cocktails has Tamara had and so she was like oh all this other stuff y'all don't say nothing when all these white men do this over martinis and they be drunk and toe down but as soon as a black woman do it it's a problem so she going off to the side to have a moment and talk with her so Delilah is still at the function. So her son is at the house and he done went downstairs to the living room and turned on the light and he called his daddy. His daddy is at his house, bathed up with somebody. They just cooked dinner and got wine, chilling and ready to be partaking. Go ahead and partake of the wine and things. And he trying to figure out what his son want. So he go off into the next room and talks to his son. His son was like, you know, I just want to know if it's possible for me to stay with you for a little while. And so he's like, well, what, you know, how long would that be? He was like, oh, just until Dion goes home. And so he's like, really? Oh, okay. How long has he been there? How long is he going to be there? He was like, I don't know. Probably forever. Uh, you know, he ain't trying to have that to cramp his style. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people love the fact that their kids are not around like that. And they get to go and roam and do what they want to do. And pop in when they want to. So, yeah. He told us, well, you know, I can't just say that that's going to happen. I'm going to call your mom and let her know. And, and, you know, talk to her about it. So, the fact that he knows that his son will jump the gun. I'm, I'm glad he is at least observant about that. And he had to make it clear, this is not me saying that it's going to happen. I have to talk to your mom about it. It's not set in stone. But even when he got off the phone, the little boy was like, yes. Like he a shoe in and about to go live with his daddy. Boy, you just don't know. So then he got off the phone and the heifer that's at the house was like, so what did he want? And so he was like, nothing. And she was like, well, you know, I want to meet your kids. He was like, I know. And she was like, but, you know, ain't no pressure, ain't no rush. And he was like, I know. So I'm like, well, I don't know about you. I don't know. And they haven't, you know, really shown her like that. I don't know if she is anybody that we need to even care about or that the kids would need to care about because we saw how he was rolled up, how he rolled and hovered up on some heifer that's like affiliated with his daughter's school. And Delilah and her best friend wanted to know, like, you know, they were wondering if she's ever been one of his conquests. And it could have been because the chemistry, they were doing a little bit too much. They were doing a little bit too much at the recital, honey. To me, they were. Delilah and Tamara are still at the function. And to make a long story short, they both went over their findings from both parties. And Delilah got this look on her face like, girl, I don't believe what he told you happened. And that's why she got fired and all this other stuff. And she like, I, I already know the look on your face is. Let's just settle this tonight. Like, we know Delilah. You know how she is. So, she ends up in, in the middle of the conversation. Delilah gets a phone call. And it is actually Gary's wife. And she had been calling her, trying to get her to return her phone call. She finally called her back. And she was like, I have something that I need you to see. Can you come over now? So, apparently, she left. They never said, they never showed her, like, leaving the house or none of that. She went over to the house to see her. It's the middle of the night. She showed her a pill bottle. And so apparently what happened was people had been coming by to see the baby and people had been in and out of the house. She was exhausted and Gary told her to take a nap. When she woke up from the nap, she found him dead with an empty pill bottle in his hand. But 
he has a prescription, but the prescription only had three pills in the bottle. So it's like, okay, this don't even make no sense. And it wouldn't have been enough to kill anybody. So his new prescription just came in the mail. So she was able to present him with that bottle. So at this point, she doesn't know what she needs to do or how she wants to approach it because she's trying to make sure that everything that is, you know, in her mind, she thinks, okay, this is what the situation is. She wants to make sure everything is what it is before she goes to the police. And then it basically upsets his parents because he still has living relatives that, you know, lived for him that are still out there. And, you know, nobody is understanding of what is going on. Nobody knows what's going on. And then I'm thinking this is the only thing she had to show her. She going to tell her, I got something to show you. know, my girl, you just showed her, didn't you? She led her outside to a shed, which doubled as his office. Upon him retiring, you know, when you retire, especially when you retire from someplace like that, you have to get back all property and all that stuff. He had paperwork. He had uh, electronic devices and all kinds of stuff. And that shed was full of all types of boxes of paperwork that belonged to the Osborne Corporation. And they don't know he has this stuff. And she was like, you can't tell anyone that I have this stuff. I would have to give the money back. And, you know, she, I don't think she worked. I think she was living off that retirement and all that money that he had, that they had had, they paid him off from. And then she probably finna get some money now from him dying, depending on what they rule it as. They just seal the file. So, I mean, it's hard for anybody to really get into it. Like they really covering it up. So the most is going on. And as soon as I looked and saw Delilah about to walk over to a box and touch it, I'm like, girl, first thing you need to do if you're going to touch any of this stuff is get gloves. What is wrong with you? But anyway, she on her way from this woman's house and Lyric, <laughs> AKA, uh, what's his name on here? The ex-husband. He calling her and, um, trying to talk to her about the son was like he called me tonight he said he told me this situation has gotten out of hand with Dion and she was like what Dion situation what how does something get out of hand with him he was like well apparently he's still living there and it's not a good situation da, da, da. and she was like what are you talking about like her, she should have cussed him out and was like it ain't like you over here spending time with your kids it ain't like you over here you take them one weekend, well, one week, I take them one week, and we split it 50-50. Oh, yeah, I, would, I would have to set it off. Like, if you don't shut up talking to me, <laughs> I'm doing the most. I'm out here doing the most. You already ain't giving me no child support. You ain't even around like that. You pop up when you want to pop up, but you at the house right now, beta with a heifer. I don't even want to hear it. I will be to set it off. And then she set it off again about the child support. She was like, you still ain't giving me child support. He was like, I just spent $5,000 on a violin for our child. Oh, Lord. It just went out of hand. I was like, oh, no. Y'all doing a lot. Okay, y'all. I'm tired of my spirit. So, the next scene shows Delilah rushing her daughter to get ready because she was like, I got to make a stop before I go to work. So, she popped up at Christine's house, wanting to know why she didn't call her back, why she didn't show up for her child. So, she was like, well, I've been meaning to call you back. I was going to call you. So she was like, okay, well, I'm here now. You can tell me what you were going to tell me over the phone. So she was like, I'm just not in a place where I, I'm not in a space where I could take my son back. Da, 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 da. And it just got to the point where the way she was talking, she was like, well, I mean, I'm going to need for you to get ready for something because your husband going to be back at the house in six weeks. So she had to look on her face like, what? Wait a minute, huh? Like she was very confused. I'm like, girl, you ain't been talking to your husband? Girl, I'm tired. Then all of a sudden, this man named Andre, who is a friend to her husband and her, a friend, then rolled up from the back. And so Delilah, like, and who are you? Girl, I am tired. And he had the audacity to say that he is a friend to both of them. You can ask Nate. You can go ask him. I was like, why are you up in the house? Like, y'all are clearly screwing. Like, there is no reason for you to be at this woman's house. She got on a whole robe and just very comfortable in the house without her child. But you in the house. She let you in the house. If you are not in the space to take your child back, you should be accepting applications for nobody. So, basically, are you trying to tell me that when you found out your husband got hurt or before that, you had a situation? Like, I'm trying to understand. 
Did you have a situation going on beforehand that Andre knew? I mean, that that um your husband knew about and you lost interest and you was just staying with him for the child. Like, what is going on? I, I'm very inquisitive. I need to know. Because the way he said it, he said it like, okay, he know about me. Ask about me. Like, he know what it is. I'm looking like, what? He was real bold and then he closed the door. And like, Delilah is done. Uh, we are now at the end of the episode and Delilah is back at the office. She has secured the boxes from that shed and she got the receptionist to help bring some of them in. And then she gets a text message from Tamara talking about some told you so or told you which is the name of the episode and there were pictures of Leah just in like just her bra and this in a towel and to me I'm just like just because that, that, I didn't see no text messages like I didn't see no screenshot of it saying this was the text message this was the date I'm just like, that ain't proof to me because when she was at the little gathering at the function, she was like, where's the proof? You know, I need to see proof that any of this stuff is going on. And Tamara was like, well, he said what it is. That's the story. That's the proof. And so her providing proof, is not enough for me because I need to see timestamps, which I know can be forward. Somebody need to go to the actual company and get all that. Like, y'all are doing the most just to get this woman to not speak. So, ain't no way that you live for your wife like that. For you to just be like, oh no, oh no. And in a lot of these cases, a lot of these wives are really well taken care of. So, they like, oh, they know you cheating. So, what? The wife probably know he got all these heifers. That ain't no secret. I really feel like they doing some shady stuff. Anyway, hopefully y'all enjoyed this recap review. Let's get down in the comment section and talk about it. Bye.